The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... The Yucatan in Mexico is a land of great scenic beauty and of extraordinary unforgettable legends. The enigmatic wonders found in its caverns below the surface of the earth often excel the beauty and strangeness found above. And the incredible tales told by those who explore them, cavers or spelunkers as they're called, are a challenge few of them can resist. For it can truly be said that what is seen and heard below is indeed wondrous strange. Oh, I'll miss you when it's time to go back home, Maria Val. Grandfather Hunak say maybe you and Mr. Carling stay in Yucatan. Oh, where would he get an idea like that? Grandfather speak with dead ancestors. They tell him many things. But that's impossible. And no one can talk with the dead. Grandfather not like other people. He descends from Mayan priests and prophets. When Grandfather Hunak speak, the dead answer. Our mystery drama, The Lost Tomorrows, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Stella Moss and stars Mandel Kramer and Anne Williams. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. For most serious cave explorers, penetrating deep into the bowels of the earth is a challenge impossible to resist. The very thought of a dangerous caving expedition sets the heart pounding. Rena and Matthew Carling are two such cavers who have come to a tiny town in the lake territory of Yucatan. They have only one thought in mind, exploring little-known caves where they hope to find ancient Mayan relics. They are living in a temporary structure of palm leaves set up between two large trees. Two Mayan servants, Honak and Maria Val, do their housekeeping. We've never found this many pieces so quickly, Rena. And how beautiful some of them are. Look at this piece of jade, Matthew. A Mayan princess might have worn it. And the pottery shards intrigue me. Mm. The eating utensils, all those curious patterns on them. I wish we could take the candlesticks home. They're so beautifully crafted. Seems a pity to have to give all these fascinating things to a Mexican museum. Well, just be glad they let us go into the caves to look for them. Mm. Yeah, these pottery pieces are off beat. In what way? Yeah, have a look. Hmm? Each piece has the same pattern of a small bird on it. Hmm. Poised in a sort of lunging position, head down, wings spread wide, sort of a tack stance like a toy dive bomber. What do you suppose the Mayans had in mind? Yeah, we'll have to find out. Meanwhile, into the museum box they all go. Well, let's hope we do as well as this in the cave of the lost tomorrows. Matthew, hmm? did you notice that Hunak and Maria Val both seemed upset as they served our breakfast? When we talked about tomorrow's caving trip, I mean. No, not particularly. They kept looking at each other in an odd way all the time they served us. I'd be a lot more comfortable if I knew what was on their minds. Well, I'll ask them. Hunak, you come in here for a minute. Hunak, come at once, Mr. Carling. And take it gently, Matthew. Life in this godforsaken place would be impossible without those two. Don't worry, trust me. Mr. Carling, wish for something. Or Mrs. Carling. Uh, about tomorrow's cave trip. Hunak and granddaughter take care of everything. If Mr. Carling not wish to change plans... Why should we change our plans? Well, if our luck holds out, the Mayan artifacts we found in other caves will be nothing compared to the Cave of the Lost Tomorrows. I, uh, may speak, Mr. Carling? Of course. Things you take from caves belong to dead ancestors. Do not belong in living world. Privacy of dead must be respected. Hunak, we are scientific cavers, and we believe that things like these belong where they can be studied 
But for living to take from dead, Hunak not understand. Well, that's the difference between science on one hand and legend and superstition on the other. Please, Matthew. Hunak knows cave of lost tomorrows well. Many time Hunak go there, not same as other caves. I mean what way? Cave of fear and terror. Sacred cave of Mayan gods. Well, you don't frighten me, Hunak. Uh, please pack the usual equipment. We'll be leaving early in the morning as scheduled. Maybe Mr. and Mrs. Carling permit Hunak to go with them. Well, thank you for the offer, but we prefer to go alone. And please tell Maria Val to pack us a good lunch. We're planning a long day. That lunch looks delicious, Maria Val. Many thanks, Mrs. Carling. Grandfather Huna catch fresh fish this morning. I make for you and Mr. Carling. Well, that sounds fine. Also, you find sweet oranges in lunch basket and canteen filled from fresh, cool spring. I don't know how we'd manage without you. I'll miss you when it's time to leave Yucatan and go back home. Maybe you'll stay in Yucatan. Oh, not a chance. Grandfather say, maybe you and Mr. Carling stay. Where would he get an idea like that? Grandfather speak with dead ancestors. Dead ancestors? They tell many things. That's impossible. No one can talk with the dead. Grandfather Hunak, not same as other people. In what way? He descend to this life from Mayan priests and prophets... Learn from them wisdom of a thousand years. He speak, they answer. But how, Maria Val? How? What do they sound like? What do they say? Maria Val not hear voices. Only grandfather hear. Well, where is Hunak now? I want to talk to him about loading the jeep with our caving equipment. Mr. Carling is anxious to get started. Jeep loaded, Mrs. Carling. Hard hats with lamp, first aid kit, pocket knife, flashlight, rope ladder. Grandfather... What I want to know is why he isn't here as usual to help us take off. Grandfather asked Mr. and Mrs. Carling, please, to excuse him. Ancestors wish to speak with him this morning about Mr. and Mrs. Carling. Well, I'll take the food basket and water, Maria Val. Mr. Carling will be getting impatient. Please, to let me go with you, Mrs. Carling. Maria Val know well cave of lost tomorrows. First Hunak, now you. Why are you so anxious to go with us? Maria Val, Grandfather Hunak wish to speak to you. I come, Grandfather. Please not be angry, Mrs. Carling. Maria Val fear for safety of Mr. and Mrs. Carling. Tomorrow, ninth day of ninth month. What has that got to do with anything? Maria Val... What take you so long? I come, Grandfather. Please, Mrs. Carling. Foreign people, not safe in cave of lost tomorrows. Please to be careful. Please. I can't believe this cave, Matthew. I feel almost as if I've lost my sense of reality. What kind of remark is that for an experienced caver? It's so deep, so enormous, so quiet. And, and there's such a maze of passageways and chambers. I have to struggle to keep my sense of which way is up and which way is down, which way is in and which way is out. Oh, I hate to get stranded here. Well, yeah, now just stop worrying about it. I've been making a careful map of every small cave inside the large one and every connecting tunnel. Now, we've been through eight passageways and inside eight cave chambers. Is it possible there's a total of nine passageways and nine cave chambers? Nine was a sacred number to the ancient Mayans, and, and today is the ninth day of the ninth month. What's got into you? Between Hunak and Maria Val, they've really managed to upset you. Matthew, do you realize our only link for the outside world is a thin stream of daylight coming through a narrow cave entrance eight chambers and eight tunnels away? I've even lost my sense of time. I'm not sure if we've been here minutes or hours or days. Rena, trust me, we've never yet failed on a caving expedition. Look, I'll make a bargain with you. What's that? The minute we find a really good piece for our museum box, we'll do a right about face and go back to camp. Fair enough? <laughs> 
Now, if you'll just let your searchlight sweep over the darkness for a second or two, I'll be my old self again. The darkness here is different somehow. Like black, paper-thin glass. Well, I'd rather save my batteries and stick with the light from the lamps on our hard hats, but if it'll make you feel better, on goes the flashlight. <gasps> oh, Matthew, I'm simply right. awful. Take it easy now. That's a human skeleton over there. With a huge rock resting on the leg bones as if it fell on him from above and pinned the poor man down. I'm turning off the flashlight. Oh, please, don't. All right. But I don't want to hear that we shouldn't have come to this cave. Look at that enormous dead tree on the right. Mm -hmm. As if its branches were woven into a gigantic kind of spider's web. And all the human skulls and bones caught in it. Ooh. How do you suppose that happened? Well, we'll check it out when we get back to the States. Some expert will have a perfectly good archaeological explanation. I'm afraid, Matthew. And I don't know exactly of what. Rina, yeah. any caver who isn't afraid is dangerous. He usually winds up forgetting how important it is to be cautious. Now, we try this next passageway and see where it leads. Oh, I suppose so. We better take this one with a crouch walk. Mm -hmm. I'll go first. If things get too cramped, we may have to do a belly crawl. Stay close. Now, just be sure your knee pads are in place and your gloves are on snugly. Don't want any blistered knees or bleeding hands. Oh, don't move too fast. I, I feel better when I can reach out and touch you. And remember to relax now. It's easier to adjust your body to the narrow parts of the crawlways. Oh, it smells like damp earth in here. It, it doesn't seem quite so black as in the cave chamber we just left. Well, your eyes are getting used to the darkness. You know, you might be right, Rena. It does smell of damp earth. It's getting muckier underfoot, too. We should be heading for a wet cave this time. Just be careful you don't slip now and twist an ankle. Matthew? Uh, the lamp on your hard hat. Did you put the light out? Why would I do that? Your hat light just went out, too. Damp batteries, maybe. Well, our flashlight is certainly a godsend. Use it, will you? Be careful around this bend, Rena. Our movement seems to have loosened some falling stones. There are no stones overhead, Matthew. It's all level clay ledges. What's that yellowish light just ahead? Aren't caves usually dark places? It's probably the entrance to the next cave chamber. I'll be down to something that looks like yellow sunlight isn't glowing in there. Please, have a look around before we go in, Matthew. Ah, uh, just be a second or two. Great. Where on earth do these birds come from? Keep away from me, you crazy creatures. What's the matter, Matthew? Oh, they're birds. Hundreds of them with beaks like small knives. Birds? Actually dive bombing right at me as if they didn't want me in there. Hey, can I put my eyes out? Oh, I don't hear any of them anymore. Huh? Gone as suddenly as they came. How? What kind of birds, Matthew? Well, they look like those small birds on some of our Mayan artifacts. Must we go in there? Well, I don't see why not. Because the idea of hundreds of birds in a cave this far underground bothers me. I don't understand it. And, and why would they want to attack you? Well, there's only one way we'll ever find an explanation. Now, are you coming with me or am I going in there alone? How to understand the mind, the spirit that compels a man to walk on the moon to touch the bottom of the sea, or as in the case of Matthew Carling, to defy a long history of ancient superstition to explore the dangers and mysteries of a multi-chambered cave in faraway Yucatan. Will Matthew's passion for caving bring him in touch with some explanation of the mysteries in the cave of the lost tomorrows? I'll be back shortly with Act Two. Yucatan legend tells us that nine was considered a sacred number to the ancient Mayans. Rena and Matthew Carling, two Americans whose caving obsession has brought them to Yucatan, have just crawled through the ninth passageway and are about to enter the ninth cave chamber in the cave of the lost tomorrows. It is the ninth day of the ninth month. 
Oh, Matthew, what a breathtaking sight. All those elegant stalactites hanging from the roof like, like delicate Venetian chandeliers. They seem to be giving off a wet light. And the rock formations are spectacular. Wish we could figure out where all the bright light is coming from. Well, we'll find the explanation. Just give us time. Matthew, Mayan legend tells us that some of these subterranean caves were inhabited by gods and spirits who were called the illustrious dead. That living men and women were actually cast into caves like this one as a, a sacrifice in time of drought. Do you s- suppose... <gasps> What's that? That crater directly below us. It's filling with water. The bottom is covering completely. It's not a crater anymore, Matthew. It's turning into a lovely shallow lake. Thousands of, of silver water bubbles with bright colored fish. Rena, look what's on the edge of the shore. A dugout from way back when. <gasps> you need any help through that muck underfoot? I, I want to have a closer look. I can manage. Oh, I'm glad... Thick boots are a part of caving gear. Look there. There's a pair of handcrafted paddles resting on the dugout. They look like beauties. We'll be the envy of every caver we know when we add them to our collection. Well, we haven't got them yet, Matthew. The dugout's being pushed from the shore into the water. Well, how on earth do you explain that? I can't see anyone. Can you? And yet no one seems to be in the boat. The light in here has changed, Matthew. It's getting dimmer all the time. Oh, there. Whoever you are, I want to talk to you. Come back here. Here, 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 here. Matthew? The dugout is standing on end, absolutely upright, on top of the water. It's going under, prow first, slowly, as if a magnet is pulling it down. Happy. It's disappeared completely. Oh, I can't take any more. Please, Matthew, let's get out of here. Few who visit Cave of Lost Tomorrows wish to return there. Sacred Cave can destroy man's mind. Then why do you keep going back? Hunak, born of ancient priests and prophets. Hunak is living messenger of holy ancestors. Oh, next few days, not good for caving. Well, thank you for the message. God not... say Mr. Carling must not make discord. Order you not to go cave of lost tomorrows again. You expect us to believe that? Hunak say you must keep Mayan gods friendly. Strange underground sounds are not unusual in the life of experienced cavers, Hunak. And neither are mirages or extreme natural phenomena. And besides, my wife and I are almost as familiar with Mayan legends about gods and voices as you are. What you call legend, Hunak, call truth. You and Mrs. Carling hear perhaps of ancient Compassionata cross? Of course. You and Maria Val have been wearing them around your neck since the day you came to work for us. Why do you ask? Hunak suggests Mr. Carling wear Compassionata cross. You're offering me your Compassionata cross to protect me when we go back to the cave? Maria Val will give hers to Mrs. Carling. That's nice of you both. Hunak, <sighs> look, I don't know how to make you understand this. But I just don't believe in protective talismans of any kind. Talismans exist only because people are frightened of things that that they think cannot be explained. Some things are not to be explained. Please, who not hope for change of mind before tomorrow? Not a chance. Mrs. Carling and I will handle any situation that arises tomorrow... In our own way. You're a good sport to have another go at this cave with me, Rena. I thought I might be coming back alone. I'm glad the water's almost completely gone from the crater. So shallow, it's hard to believe what it was like when we left here yesterday. Well, you watch your step just the same. Hey, yellow light still bother your eyes? No, I feel comfortable. 
I even enjoyed eating Maria Val's Mexican picnic lunch, sitting on a hard stone throne. Uh, I tell you, I married the right girl. You know, Rena, sometimes... Ooh. Uh, anything more? I tripped on something. Something is sticking out of the muck under my feet. What is it? I'll tell you in a second. Ah. Fairly large pottery shard. Let's scrape off the mud, see what we have here. Yeah. Another prize for our Yucatan collection. Pattern on it, Matthew. Mm-hmm. Their ancient sacred monkey. Funny little creature. Mm-hmm. So small, such a long tail. Why do you suppose... Look all that racket up there. Look how we left our things. A pack of small monkeys helping themselves to what, what's left of our lunch. Well, they can have it. Well, doesn't it strike you as rather odd? Those birds that tried to attack you yesterday were the same as the sacred bird on some of our artifacts. And now these monkeys... Look at the pottery shard you just found. The monkeys on it are exactly the same as those stealing our lunch. Where did they go? Yeah, they're probably picnicking on Maria Val's good cooking in one of the smaller cave chambers. Rena, look at the water. What an incredible blue it is. A golden light overhead... Translucent blue light underfoot. What a place. Matthew, have you been noticing that school of large pink and red fish over there? Carrying water plants in their mouths? And what about them? They all swim to the same spot and drop the plants there. As if they were trying to cover up something. Well, let's go see what they're up to. Hmm? What on earth are these? One, two, three, four... Nine sticking straight up into the air out of the water. Matthew, these are crosses, camouflaged by the water plants. Nine crosses as symmetrically laid out as in an old burial ground. Not only are they crosses, but... But what? Look, each one marks a grave. Nine graves... And the crosses themselves, can't you see? They're exactly like the ones that Hunak and Maria Val wanted to give us. Only these are much larger. You're absolutely right. Compassion not a cross is two feet high. No wonder they wanted to keep us out of this cave. Why, to a museum or a private collection, these could be worth a fortune. You're not thinking of taking one, are you, Matthew? Why not? Because, according to the Mayan legend, no fisherman ever set sail without one. They, they considered them a talisman, a protector... In death as well as life. Rena, it's a legend. Oh. Remember? Now, come over here and help me loosen one oh. of these. We're not going to go back to camp without oh, one. I won't do it, Matthew. All right, I'll do it myself. What was that? Oh, it's probably some cave animal. You know, this isn't easy. Cross has sunk a lot deeper than I thought. I'll give it another try. Oh, give it up, Matthew, please. Beginning to fill up again. Just one last try. I'll go without you, Matthew. Please, you're not making sense. I got it. I got it. I got it. I'm coming. I'm bringing it with me. Compassion out of cross for our collection. Please, Mr. Carling, Mrs. Carling, do not go inside your room. Why not? Something happened here at camp while you were both at Cave of Lost Tomorrows. Well, tell us about it. What is it? Please, wait here. Maria Val returned with Grandfather. Not be long. Grandfather explained. I'm going into my room. Are you coming, Rena? Of course. Only I can't imagine what's in there that could shake her up so. Well, nothing serious. You can be sure. What's going on in here? Candles, dozens of them burning on every surface. It's, it's like a church burning votive offerings in memory of the dead. Look at these over here. Burning in the candlesticks we brought back from our caving. And these are our pottery pieces. And these are our glass artifacts held in place by melted tallow. They've even turned the the clapperless death bells upside down and used them to hold candles. Mm. Oh, here too they didn't like for some reason. Hunak! Marie Val, will you come in here right away, please? 
I don't understand why anyone would do such a thing. Oh, who now keeps insisting he's descended from ancient priests and prophets, doesn't he? He even walks around with jade plugs in his ears to prove it. Mr. Calling, call Hunak and Maria Val. Maria Val, stay here. I am afraid. Look, would you two be good enough to tell me why, when it is still broad daylight, there are dozens of candles burning all over this room? Hunak, not light candles. Maria Val, not light candles. Well, then who did light them? Please observe candles closely, Mr. Carling, Mrs. Carling. Well? Two near your bed. Not burning. Same size, same color, smooth and even. Hunak, buy those for camp at store. And the burning candles? Not same. Those Hunak did not buy. He's right, Matthew. The ones burning are, are irregular in size, shape, and color. They have a, a coarse, primitive look. Well, who brought them here and lit them? How about it, Maria Val? You take care of this room for us. Maria Val not understand these things. Hunak? Mr. Carling, you remove sacred objects from Cave of Lost Tomorrows. Hmm? You must return. Dead ancestors honor each other. It is they who bring ancient candles. It is they make them burn. <laughs> do, do, do not weep, granddaughter. Do you actually expect us to believe this? If you do not return sacred objects burning candles, only a beginning. Of what? Maria Val, put out the candles. You can both go. Maria Val will not touch burning candles. No. Mr. Carling, please. Please. Hunak, you put them out. Hunak, not offend world of departed spirits. Hunak, not put out candles. He won't have to, Matthew. Every candle in the room is flickering and going out. Someone is blowing them out. Look. One by one. Every... Single one of them. Hornak stands motionless a moment, his eyes closed, his head bowed, his lips moving silently. Then slowly he lowers himself to the earthen floor, lies flat on his back, and places his fingertips lightly on his moist forehead. Soft, archaic sounds form on his lips and fill the air, making a hypnotic melody. Matthew and Rena Carling watch incredulously as they realize that Hunak is attempting to communicate with his dead ancestors. I'll return shortly with Act Three. Can the living make contact with the world of the dead? Is it possible to hear them, see them, ask their advice, carry out their bidding? Matthew and Rena Carling have met such a man in Yucatan. He calls himself Hunak and claims to have brought them a warning from his dead ancestors. Matthew and Rena are sitting in a coconut grove on the edge of a small bay. What exactly do you make of Hunak, Matthew? No. Oh. I'd put him in a category with people who consider themselves wizards, witch doctors, medicine men, you know, that sort of thing. Whatever he's up to, Rin, he doesn't intimidate me one bit. I think it's the compassion out of cross that concerns him the most. Well, I won't give that up, Rena, no matter what. I mean, that is the most... <gasps> oh! Matthew, are you all right? Well, I think so. That whole cluster of enormous coconuts missed me by a hair's breadth. If they had landed on your head... Matthew, those coconuts... They're absolutely green. I always thought coconuts never dropped from a tree until they were ripe. Very ripe. Let's see which branch they fell from. This lower one, I think. Well, what are those marks? And machete cuts. Can you imagine that? It was coconuts who were cut loose with a large machete knife. No one has been here. Well, we haven't even seen a bird or an animal. Let's go back to camp. Okay. We'll walk back along the bay, pick up Hunak and Maria Val where we left them fishing. 
please. Mrs. Collins. Maria Bell does not wish to stay here. I wish to go back to camp. We were just going to pick you and, and your grandfather up. Not necessary be upset, Maria Val. Not necessary disturb Mr. and Mrs. Collins. What's bothering you, Maria Val? Something happened while you and your grandfather were fishing? Answer, Maria Val. I see strange things, Mr. Collins. What kind of things? Ancient small boat rise from beneath water. Not dugout. No one in boat. Paddled move with no hands. You saw that too, Hunak? Yes, Hunak. See too. What else happened? Maria does not move. Just look. In bottom of ancient boat, Maria see fishing net. Fishing net was tossed from small boat to my shoulders. Like beautiful shawl. Then small ancient boat moves swiftly from shore and... And disappear below surface of water. Is that not so? Please, take Maria Val back to camp, Mr. Colling. What did you do with the fishing net, Maria Val? Hunak has it. Would you mind letting me and my wife hold on to it for a bit? Hunak advised Mr. Carling, leave net with Hunak. I'm not playing games, Hunak. Let me have it. Thank you. We go back camp now, Mr. Carling. Uh, one thing more. You know quite a bit about coconut groves, don't you? Hunak live all his life where are coconut trees. Mm. I suppose you have a look at the cluster of green coconuts lying on the ground on the other side of this tree. Nothing on ground, Mr. Garling. Nothing? Well, I'll be it. You carry a machete knife, don't you? Machete knife belong to dead ancestors. Suppose I told you my wife and I found machete marks on the branch of this tree. And that the machete marks were exactly where a large cluster of green coconuts fell to the ground, missing me by a hair's breadth. Where, Mr. Carling? That first large branch, right above our heads. Uh, no machete marks there, Mr. Carling. Only many green coconuts waiting to be ripe. You see for yourself. <laughs> I can't seem to understand what goes on here, Matthew. I feel as if my thinking is going native or if if Hunak and Maria Val are putting a drug of some kind in what we eat and drink. Let's change our plane reservations and go home. Rena, Yucatan is a -a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Now, I'm not cutting it short. Look, we'll both feel better after a good night's sleep. I don't even feel comfortable in this room we're living in anymore. Would, Would you mind leaving a light on tonight? Somehow the idea of the the dark bothers me. Oh, come on. You don't really mean that. Besides, you know I can't sleep if there's a light on. Oh, all right. Put it out. Uh, Sleep well, darling. I like your really early start in the morning. Did you hear anything just now, Matthew? Hmm? What? (gasps) Matthew! Rena! My throat! Something tightening around my throat? What on earth got into you? I can hardly breathe. And not a rope choking me. You put on the light. There's no one here. You must have started to have a nightmare. Wait a second. What is it? Well, the skin on your throat is all red and also... Also what? There are small round marks on your neck. As if from a knotted rope of some kind? Oh. Andrew, I can't bear it anymore. I'm going to pack this minute and get ready to go home. Nobody could possibly have been in here without our hearing him. No sign of any knotted rope anywhere in the room. Look, on the floor at my feet. The fisherman's net that I took from Hunak. Someone was trying to strangle me with that... that knotted fisherman's net. Suitcases wide open, things scattered all over the floor. Someone's been here looking for something, probably after we fell asleep. Oh, what I don't understand is why we don't ever see or hear anyone. Rena, look at this box. It was full of our best relics. Absolutely empty. The pieces with the sacred birds and monkeys, the candlesticks, the death bell. Every one of them gone. 
they even took the Compassionata cross that I had right under where I was sleeping. Well, why didn't they touch this other box here? It's full of the other artifacts we found. Matthew, they only took the sacred relics. Oh, please, let's be satisfied with these and... Go home? Not on your life. Oh, Honak? Maria Val? I'm going to tell them we'll leave. Those two are probably miles away by this time. We'll never see either of them or the missing pieces again. Mrs. Carlin, come, Maria Val. Just come in, please. Oh, uh, yes, uh, come in and have a look around. <gasps> Why are things all over the floor? Maybe you can tell us. Mrs. Carling wish to see you who night. Some awful things happened in this room last night. First, someone tried to strangle Mrs. Carling. And then later they managed to steal all of our sacred relics. Dead. Do not steal from living, Mr. Carling. It is living who steal from dead. Well, what became of those relics and our compassion out across? Now, where are they, Hunak? Do you have any idea? In sacred cave of lost tomorrows, where they belong. If that's so, who put them there? Hunak not know. Dead ancestors tell Hunak only that they are there. I don't know why I keep letting you persuade me to come back into this cave. Happily, the lake is shallow today. Sloshing through this muddy lake bottom in heavy boots isn't exactly fun. We're here in the burial ground, so we'll have some answers pretty soon now. Look, count the compassion out of crosses, like I just did. This is two, six. Nine upright crosses marking nine tidy graves, including the one you dug up the last time. The cross is back where you took it from. Yes, and I'll bet Hunak has a pretty good idea of how it... What, what happened? Stubbed my boot again. Oh, can you see what? I see it. An old metal box. Pretty heavy. Well, what's in it? Well, how do you like that? All our stolen cave pieces. Every single one. Plus... Plus what? This pair of jade earplugs. We had no jade earplugs in our cave collection. No, but our friend Hunak wears a pair to prove that he's descended from Mayan priests and prophets. I wonder how they got in there. We'll figure that out later. Here, you hold the box for me, will you, while I dig up one of the crosses. Oh, don't do it, Matthew. We've had nothing but trouble since we found this burial ground. Rena, please move back a little bit, will you? For this crowbar, it should take no time at all. Ah, I'm not going to let you do it. Rena, let go of me. You're not going to dig up that cross. Not again. Please, please talk with Hunak. Look who's coming to join us. Hunak and Maria Bell. Oh, to stop us, you mean? Now, say where you are, you two. I mean to finish what I started. Please, talk with Grandfather. What's on your mind, Hunak? We, we come say goodbye. Not work anymore at your camp. Oh? Who like bring farewell present to wear around Mr. Carling's neck? Maria Val, bring one for Mrs. Carling, too. Please, lower your head, Mr. Carling. Now, wait a minute. What's on that chain? You offered me that miniature compassion at a cross once before, Hunak, and I thought I made it clear that I don't believe in things like that. Put it on my neck, Maria Val, and thank you. Mrs. Carling, wise to accept farewell gift. Make Mr. Carling take it, too. Please, Hunak. Get away from me, Hunak. I don't need it. I'm taking one of the large ones for our collection. Do not struggle, Mr. Carling. Hunak, put this on your neck. So I'm taking it off. Can't you just accept it? It won't come off. Can't get it off. Why is that? The lake, Grandfather. Beginning to fill up again. I gotta finish digging up that cross. No. Rena, don't just stand there. Either help me or get out of the way. No, oh, I am afraid, Grandfather. We go quickly to shore. There is not much time. Come to shore, Mrs. Harry. Please do not stay there. Let's go with the Matthew. It's almost loose, Rena. We're gonna have one of these large compassion out of crosses after all. I don't think we can make it. Not not with the way the water's rising. It's. Oh, Matthew! Are we about? 
dramatic, Rena. It's us. Look behind you, Matthew. The dugout just came out of the small cave chamber behind you. The dugout? Yes, you're right. Uh, it's heading straight for us. Keep that thing away from me. Uh, yeah, keep it away. Oh, are they up to? Rena, I'm being pulled out of the dugout. Oh. I can't see anyone or hear anyone, but I'm being pulled in. Throw me, whoever you are. Let's go. The lake is so deep now, so swift, like a whirlpool. Try to get to shore, Rena. Save yourself. <laughs> the dugout. It's coming toward me now. Now get away. I can't. They're pulling me into the dugout, too. Why can't I see you? Touch. Why can't I see them? The plow of the dugout. What's oh, happening? It's pointing upward. Lake is rising like a tidal wave. We've spun around. Uh, We're pointing downward now. Matthew. We're going beneath the surface. It's like being poured headlong into a powerful waterfall. Deeper and deeper. I'm glad I'm wearing Maria Val's miniature and wash another clothes. And that when I made you wear it. Rina, is yours still uh, around your neck? Someone just took mine off, chain and all. Someone just took mine off, too. Listen! We're civilized people! In a civilized world! Things like this don't happen to us! They just don't happen! Don't happen. underground lake subsides, Hunak and Maria Val look down at two familiar bodies, drenched, lifeless, lying close to the mysterious burial ground. The miniature compassionate crosses are gone from their necks and hung innocently on the necks of their rightful owners. In the burial ground, the large compassionate cross stands upright in its place, one of nine, a sacred number to the ancient Mayans. I'll be back shortly. The story you have just heard is based upon a legend told in Akumal in Yucatan. A small museum there displays among its ancient Mayan treasures several compassionata crosses said to have been found on the floor of a body of water close by. The large ones are like those which mark the graves in the cave of lost tomorrows. The miniatures are identical with those worn by Hunak and Maria Val. Our cast included Mandel Kramer, Ann Williams, Arnold Moss, and Elizabeth Latham. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.